All right, I wanted to take a minute and talk about some programs that are included in Dragon OS. Uh, they've been in there for a while, WSJTX and JS8 Call. Uh, so, uh, some people had requested them. Uh, I am uh, by no means an expert on ham, uh, but now that I've actually got a few of these things working, this is really interesting to me, so uh, a lot I need to learn. Uh, but this video is just going to show uh, how to get to the point where I am right now on the screen which is um, using everything minus grid tracker that's included in Dragon OS to receive uh, FT8 messages uh, with a hack RF. And if you hang around long enough, uh, I, I think I'll be able to squeeze in here and show how to do something very similar uh, with Cubic SDR and SDR Play equipment. And also how to get grid tracker going, which shows uh, where I'm receiving the messages from based on um, individuals' uh, call signs. So, pretty interesting. Uh, FT8, uh, I didn't know a lot about it, but it's 13 character limit. Best of my understanding, uh, typically has uh, the call signs and some other information. Uh, so not real robust in terms of uh, like a chat messenger or something like that. Uh, it looks like JS8 call would be uh, closer to that, allowing more characters and uh, actual um, what looks like conversations going back and forth. So anyways, I'm not smart, uh, uh, you know, on, ha on hand. So there's a lot of other videos out there that you can watch. To get more into the weeds on uh, the details of this, this is just going to kind of show you how to use Dragon OS and a software defined radio to get up and running at least to receive. So, all right, let me close these out. Close out Grid Tracker. We'll close out WSJTX and we'll close out GQRX. Um, I've ran this command uh, twice now, uh, which in trying to prepare to make this video has made two virtual audio links. This uh, command is only temporary, so when you reboot it will be gone. Uh, you can make it persistent, uh, but for this video, uh, just be aware you'll need to run this at least once, which will create a virtual audio cable, and I'll, exp you know, I'll explain why. So I'll put this command down in the description, run that, which will then give you Oh, you see, I've got two virtual syncs, so you only want to have uh, one. And um, yeah, so all right, so you run that. You'll open up, and we can do. Let's we'll start from scratch here on uh, at least GQRX. If I remove my config file, and we'll start from scratch. All right, so I'll start up the GQRX, uh, the newer one, which I'm actually uh, uploading or getting ready to upload a new ISO that'll have 2.14.4. So I'll open it up. I've got my HackRF plugged in. I'll find that here. I want the one that's got uh, the device string there. Uh, input rate, I'll go ahead and leave as is, but the decimation, take this down or, uh, to 128 to get the sample rate down. I won't mess with anything else except for the audio input. You should only see default uh, built-in analog and one virtual sync. I've, like I explained why I've got two there, so I'll pick the first one. And that'll bring up GQRX. And I want to take a look at the remote control settings and make sure there's the allowed host of 127.0.0.1 with a port of 7356. I'm going to say OK on that. Uh, let's see, also too, uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and start uh, DSP, and you see here we'll need to go to USB on the mode, and I hover over and left click on the, on the edge of this and pull this out to maybe like 3.6, you can see the filter width there, and then I'll turn remote control on. All right, I'll move that over here. Oh, also under input controls, uh, I'll, I'll put the gains up about halfway here. That's worked out for me. I've got a uh, USB cable over to a HackRF cable going out aside, uh, ju literally just the cable that comes with the RTL SDR uh, antenna, uh, the little TV looking antenna. 
And, uh, and of course, I could have used the RTL SDR for this as well. It just, uh, the HackRF, I think, hits all the bands. So I, I just chose to use the HackRF. So you can do the same with the RTL SDR. All right, so we got that. Now let's open up under sound and video. I'll go with uh, WSJTX. Um, JS8 calls a whole nother thing, so just stick with this. The first time you open it, uh, of course, it's not going to be set up like it is for me. Uh, you'll close out of this first window. You go to File, Settings. If you do have a call sign and location, you could fill that in. I, I don't, so I'm not, and I'm not looking to transmit anything. So I'll go under Radio Rig, and I scroll down and found the Hamlib Net Rig Control and put in that same IP address from GQRX 127.0.0.1 with the same port and then I did a test which uh, you should see some green if you have a successful connection and then under audio um, you could either put it to virtual sync or default you should see you know I've got green over here if I were to put it on I don't know something else uh, and uh, oh, let's see, let's just do for example, say I just stuck it on this here and hit OK. Uh, I lose that, right, because the connection is not being made for the audio. So let's see, I'll just go with the virtual sync one. I'll leave the output as is. And so at this point, you know, I've got the audio coming across that virtual link. And then if you watch here, you see a change in GQRX, so I know that the connection between the two is being made and I'm controlling it. And uh, something else that's not uh, in DragonOS is this uh, from gridtracker.org downloads. I've downloaded the, uh, sorry, the uh, AMD Intel x86 64-bit tar.gz. And I just used uh, the file uh, explorer in the downloads and opened and extracted that. And we'll go ahead, change to downloads, grid tracker. You can look in there, you see it's already built for you. I'll run grid tracker. And I'll have this running. You can Roll out here a little bit and so what this is doing is looking at the logbook and live information and when these uh, uh, messages that you're receiving are coming across uh, I, I'm wanting to say based on the, you know the call sign and the information in there this grid tracker uh, plots what it receives on the map so then you can tell where you're receiving these messages from uh, I I'm by no means uh, like I said smart on ham yet. Uh, I do know that if you read up on this, the window up here, the information that's coming down kind of in the um, waterfall, if you uh, click there, you can move and that's what you'll be decoding. Let's see. You see how the uh, red and green move up here. So there's a lot I le need to learn. Um, I'm just waiting to see if we get uh -oh. Let's see. If I leave it run long enough I should get something plotted on the map here right there we go that's what I wanted to see so and then if you look over that you can see Illinois you see the uh, station <clears throat> excuse me the band and yeah so uh, again I'm not going to transmit anything but if you did have a license you could uh, well definitely probably not with just the hacker you're going to need a lot more power but uh, at least with this um, I've done nothing special uh, and I'm able to receive some messages I do have a, a ham more of a, an antenna probably designed for this that I'm borrowing I, I need to get it set up and I'm pretty excited about that as I learn more but this will get you going okay and let me think so uh, this this same setup, what I just did with the virtual audio sync and the re, uh, remote part of GQRX, you could also use to set up and link over to JSA Call. Okay, so let's let's stop here. I've shown how to get this all set up. Now let's take another look here at uh, 
I'll close out of this. I'll exit out of this. And I'll close GQ RX. Now what I want to do is um, I'm going to replace the hack RF with a RSP1 alpha. So bear with me. All right, so we've got the RSP1 alpha connected to the antenna. We've got it over to the laptop. We can do Got, I also have a Kerberos SDR plugged in. Let me unplug that for a second. All right, let's try this again. I had to restart the uh, SDR Play uh, API, which you can see here, sudo, uh, sudo system control restart SDR Play service. Now I'll go ahead and click the RSP1 alpha and while we've got that, I'll open up another window. And we've already did the, um, you know, the virtual sync. We've already got that taken care of. Now I'm trying to find. All right, this is what I was looking for. We'll use what's built in here, rig ctld-v-m1-r. You can see it looks very similar to 127.0.0.1-t7356. So we'll do that. That'll be in the background. We'll come back over here. We'll pick USB. And... We'll click in here to open up a modem. We'll go to, let's see, yeah, Pulse Audio is fine. We'll go to Rig Control. We want to look for our Hamlib, Hamlib Net Rig Control. I've got that checked. Serial rate I've not changed, and the control port you can see 127.0.0.1.7356. I've got control rig, follow rig, floating center, and track modem on. And I'll click enable rig. And you see that uh, you got some information here over on this side. All right, so now we've got the RSP1 alpha, we've got everything set up again. We'll go back. Oh, the other thing in here is remember settings, automatic gain. So you get some uh, additional features, you know, depending on what you have plugged in. I am not, uh, again, the smartest on, I always forget the gain settings on RSP1 Alpha. You can probably take automatic gain off, which is going to give you your IG or IFGR and yeah, RFGR. I'll try for right now with automatic gain on. So we've got that set up. Come over here. Again, we will open up WSJTX. All the settings that we set before should be um, should be able to be left uh, the same. We just want to check. Let's see, so, and the volume, you know, that clipping, you don't want it to be in the red. So we'll go under Mixer, we'll have a look here. So Cubic SDR output should be on Virtual Sync. And you can, you know, adjust the audio as needed. Output, got it on Virtual Sync. So we should be okay here. 
take this up a little bit. So again, um, this I'm really not going to get into the weeds because there's still a lot I need to learn. But you can see um, that the connection is made and set up. So, and you can do the same exact thing. With Grid Tracker. And so you can have it running and it will do the same thing. So, of course, get your gain set right. Uh, you know, you're decoding the right things over here. And uh, this will at least uh, get you going. And, and I've got a lot of messages across on the 20 meter band. And uh, yeah, so if there's something I've left out, let me know in the comments. This is my attempt to get smarter on this, and while I'm getting smarter, I figured I might as well record and show how to use what's built in to get everything working. Uh, and then, again, it's not that much more work to get JSA call going after you have all these steps. It's essentially the same thing as WSJTX uh, uh, and getting that ham lib, ham lib uh, net control and all that tied together. Although I think JSA call requires you um, to put in a uh, call sign and uh, your grid uh, information. So, all right, there you go. That's my attempt at uh, showing something about ham. Uh, now that I'm into this, this is another rabbit hole and pretty uh, exciting to me. All right, thanks.